Welcome to Business Talk here on Business Tech South Africa's number one business news website, The Rand. We love talking about our beloved Rattler. It's been the second best performing emerging market currency against the dollar this year, only behind the Brazilian rail. And it's our weekend bride talk. It's our dinner party talk. I think we take a lot of pride and a lot of prejudice from its daily moves. And my next guest certainly loves talking about the RAND even more than most of us do, Bianca Bertis, Director at Citadel Global, who uh, chats to us. Uh, one of the first interviews I believe you giving, Bianca, after returning from maternity leave. So I have to say congratulations, chapeau. Thank you so much, Michael, and welcome to, to all your viewers this afternoon. Now, I've spoken to a lot of analysts recently who claim that the RAND doesn't follow the rules of the traditional emerging market playbook. Uh, why do you believe that the RAND ignores sort of the common trends that are found in other emerging market currencies? Well, as you mentioned, there's definitely a reason why it's called the Rattler. And it has this ability to surprise to the upside more often than not. Um, and I think one of the main reasons for that is typically the hunt for yield. Currently, what we are seeing in the environment is a very low yield type of return. And what investors are looking for is even though it comes with a little bit more risk, they are willing to absorb that to get that little bit more return. And South Africa offers that in, in RAND terms. What we are also seeing in the market at the moment are the strong commodity prices, and that is definitely bolstering the RAND as well. And that is, uh, you know, it's fed through in our terms of trade. Uh, and we saw in the budget recently, it's meant that we've got a, a nice windfall. How sustainable that is? Well, that can take us down another rabbit hole. Now, early to mid-Feb, just before the budget, I think many were expecting the RAND to weaken because we saw rising US Treasury yields. But instead, it did the opposite. It, it posted regular gains and really showing quite an impressive resilience. What do you believe the reason behind the RAND's recent resilience is? Currently, globally, we're going from the one emergency to the next. And currently, as it stands with the Russian-Ukraine fallout, our geographical distance from those countries are actually playing in our favor at the moment. We are seeing some capital flight out of European countries, and that capital needs to find a home. And due to our ability to actually act as an investment hub, we are seeing quite a bit of those flows flow into South Africa. We've also seen progressively strong commodity prices throughout the year. As an exporting country of commodities, that has bolstered our trade, um, our trade balance, and that has added to the RAND's positive response, as well as its resilience while the rest of the emerging markets are taking a bit of a beating. Yeah, we've been running those regular trade surpluses, uh, and it really has acted as something of a buffer. I cast my mind back to 2015, when South Africa was lumped in this emerging market uh, basket of the fragile five. Uh, and we, we, we kind of protected to some extent because of the commodity rebound uh, on the back of that. If you were to look at trends, and I think it's uh, fraught uh, with, uh, with difficulty and traps to look at trends in an environment where we've got this increased geopolitical tension and no one really knows what Vladimir Putin is going to do next. But what RAND based trends do you expect to see in the coming weeks and months and why? You rightly pointed out it's largely dependent on the geopolitical landscape and how that will play out in the coming months and, and, and weeks. Um, what this means for the RAND, however, will be dependent on global inflation as well as the commodity prices. For now, we're not expecting any major blowouts and we expect the RAND to continue to find support in these elements that we mentioned earlier, yield seeking, commodity prices, capital flight that's actually looking for a bit of yield. Um, however, caution is key. We do expect the RAND to train between the 15 to 15.50 range for, for the time being, but the geopolitical landscape is fluid and things can change very quickly. So caution is always advised. Absolutely. You don't know if uh, the man with the big red button in front of him might press it. Uh, he does seem to be quite unstable at the moment. Uh, and it's interesting that the market is now um, so fixated on the geopolitical risk uh, that we're not really talking much about COVID anymore. That seems to have receded as a risk and whether or not we'll go back into lockdowns. But I think inflation and interest rates are obviously still there. And the South African economy floating along is this big open economy or shall we say medium-sized open economy in this big ocean. Uh, and we are in a precarious position. Yes, we had a better than expected budget, but we've got the well-documented financial in issues inside state-owned enterprises. 
negative return on investments of just over uh, 16%. It's staggering. What effect do you think this is going to have on the RAND in the long term? definitely going to have to go back to fundamentals locally. Investors are going to get to a point where we are no longer being overshadowed by COVID, where we are no longer being overshadowed by the risk of a full-on war in, in the rest of Europe. And we're going to have to evaluate South Africa as an investment destination based on merit. And that is really where the problem starts coming in. Then we are sitting with an economy where we have high levels of, of government debt. We've got high levels of unemployment. We struggle with electricity sustainability we struggle with um, pro-business policy and all of those things in the long term is going to deter investment it's going to deter growth even further and the rent should then weaken on the back of that in line with the sluggish economy what we can do as south africa though is use this time where all these other elements are overpowering and overshadowing what's happening on the ground locally to kind of mitigate these factors Find, make sure that we find a solution to these problems so that once we come out of this emergency um, era that we are living in and we go back to fundamentals, that we can put a, put a solution on the table and say, but wait a minute, look at this. We are working on it. We are addressing it. And we are a sustainable investment destination. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do think that the finance minister in the budget tried to send that kind of signal to the market. We had that large yes of 180 odd billion thanks to mining, and he didn't take the money to spend on a basic income grant. He said, right, we're going to use it uh, to borrow less, to pay down some debt, and on a temporary social relief of uh, distress grant and some other smaller items, which fundamentally should help to bring down that, uh, that bond rate uh, at the long end over time, which then creates confidence, uh, it lowers hurdle rates to investment. What do you see as the best case scenario in that context in South Africa in the mid to long term that might see the rand even strengthen significant, uh, significantly against currencies like the dollar? Long-term strategy for me, first price scenario, would be to have a sustainable electricity um, supply in place. Um, that is crucial to actually building South Africa as a business hub. And uh, when we are building businesses, we are obviously creating employment, we are contributing to economic growth. So really, electricity is, is a main factor for me. We are also looking at business-friendly policy, um, political stability, so less infighting from a political level, and then a stable macroeconomic environment. However, we all live in the real world. So at the moment, I will be happy with small wins. The rallying commodity prices are supporting the RAND. We are seeing positive noises come from government, come from Treasury specifically. Um, we've seen the Reserve Bank relax some of the exchange control regulations so that we become more competitive in the investment space, in the global economic space. Um, so that's all currently bringing nice relief to, to the RAND. But mm. from a best case scenario, there's a lot of things in terms of electricity and policy that we need to get through. ASCOM um, no, remains that millstone around uh, the economy and every single South African's neck at the moment. Now, I think many South Africans, because of that, look outside the RAND and they look towards other global currencies to extract value. Which are the foreign currencies that excite you in particular this year and, and why? My approach might not be too exciting. I think in an era and a time of uncertainty, we really want safety rather than excitement. So for me, even though a lot of people think that the dollar will likely be replaced by cryptocurrency or the likes of Bitcoin, for instance, in the near future, the dollar remains one of the safest currencies out there. If you want a safe investment, if you are not that interested in the dollar, but you're still looking for that level of comfort and level of safety, the Norwegian krona is a really nice, nice currency to look at, or even the Singapore dollar are good second choices. It really depends on what you are looking for. It's also just important to bear in mind that with higher yields come higher risk. So you need to make that decision. Are you looking for yield or are you looking for safety? That's it. And if you are looking for yield, uh, your uh, ruble could turn into rubble, as we saw with the Russian ruble recently uh, falling, what, 30 percent against the dollar in one day. Uh, speaking of that, what are the impacts that you expect this uh, Russia-Ukraine war to have on forex markets? 
The whole layout of the war is actually been very interesting and the financial market as a whole has not been exempt from the fallout between Russia and Ukraine. As we've witnessed, volatility has been the name of the game. And for now, with sanctions in play, like you mentioned, the ruble has already seen a steep decline. We've seen Russia central banks hike interest rates to 20% from nine and a half. And now with Western intervention and poten potential retaliation by Russia, we can definitely expect volatility to stay. Um, there are some concerns around other Eurozone currencies that will likely bear the brunt of this fallout as we see a bit of capital flight and uncertainty um, in the Forex market. And thus far, it's been a positive contributor to the RAND. However, risk off environments, a war stricken um, or stricken world is never a positive factor for emerging markets or for risk assets. And eventually, should this continue to play out, we can expect emerging market currencies, including the RAND, to come under pressure. Yeah, ultimately, you don't want to destabilize world. Uh, you know, prosperity happens in a more stable world. And you know, whether or not we see Putin potentially miscalculating and being removed and more stability into you know, the next 12 or 18 months, we'll have to wait and see. Another big concern, obviously, and flowing from this is what it's doing to Brent crude prices and oil prices in general. Uh, general, if you look at US, uh, West Texas or Brent crude, whatever your measure, what's your prediction for, for oil this year and how would this affect global markets? Once again, it's largely dependent on the fallout between, between Russia and the Ukraine. Um, we've seen commodity prices, including oil, shoot a skyrocket. We've seen oil prices top the $100 per barrel mark. And there are analysts that are concerned that should we reach $125 um, per barrel, that the world could enter into a global recession. I don't think that we are there yet. I don't think that we would see the dollar price um, rally all the way to that level. However, unfortunately, this increase in oil prices will see a rise in inflation. We will see higher and uh, or higher inflation for a longer period of time, and we will most likely see reserve banks responding with interest rates hikes in the fullness of time even if they start tapering down on, on those um, hike rates while this war is raging on. So higher inflation, um, higher living costs, higher interest rates, and a general slowdown in, in global economic growth can be expected should the, the oil price continue on its upward trend. Well, there you have it. Tough times ahead. It feels like we've gone from a pandemic uh, into a war out of the frying pan into the fire. Bianca Burt is director at Citadel Global. Thanks so much for uh, sharing your insights into the RAND and uh, other drivers of inflation with us here on Business Talk. Take care.